what I want to do is get into the different options that we have as preppers for uh, cooking in some sort of longer longer term SHTF, and I suppose maybe middle middle of the road term. Because if you're thinking about something that lasts over a year, a lot of these options may not be viable because you're going to need fuel storage and things like that. But if you're talking about something where it's a couple months or so, that that is probably uh, so. A lot of these are probably feasible uh, with that. So. I want to talk about some of the options that we might have. And these are, you know, I, I mean, they are what they are. There's, they, they all have their drawbacks, basically. Some of them are going to be better than others. Some of them are going to be super expensive. But we need to sort of think about these different things and think about the different scenarios where it one option might be better than the other option, just like I was talking about. Maybe the third week into something, the second week into something, you're not lighting up that propane grill. Uh, you're not lighting a fire in the backyard or, or, or in your fireplace, which could be tough in the wintertime. Uh, you know, again, so many different variables. The first one I've got here, we'll just go through these. Uh, generators, and this is propane or gas-powered generators. And these, like in that initial stage, that, that one week type stage, you might be okay with using a generator although you are a huge target because of the noise that these put out. Uh, if, if people around your, and this goes for more than just cooking as well. This goes for just having the ability to turn the lights on, to get the heat on, the power, uh, whatever you're using that generator for. If you are the only one in the neighborhood that's that's got the generator and when everything is dead silent because there's no electricity, there's no run, nothing running, very few cars around, that generator uh, is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to it's going to ring for miles and miles and miles. Uh, same thing is, it, you know, if you use it for light, if you turn those lights on and nobody else has got light, if you've ever been camping and you can see on, you know, a mountain that is probably 15, 20 miles away from you and you can see somebody's got a campfire lit and it's really tiny. Same thing with, uh, you know, the lights in your house. People are going to know uh, that. Uh, that you've got something going on. Uh, you guys, I think you talk about solar in there. Yeah, I think solar is a, a one of the one of the best options. And I'll just move on from this one because uh, this is uh, one that would be a really good option. <laughs> but this sucker, this goal zero right here. Uh, let me see here. This goal zero right here on this uh, the picture that I've got right here is about three grand. So you could you could power up a, a, a refrigerator, uh, even a small, just a, a little, one of those little tiny refrigerators are going to take probably 50 to 100 amp hours a day. They're going to take up a lot of juice. Uh, they're easy to run, but something like this would power one of those. This will power a full size refrigerator, but you're talking about three grand here. Now, they do have Generac generators, but again, those are loud. So this would be a really good option, but the price is a little bit inhibitive. Now, I know that Goal Zero, you're, you're paying a little bit extra for the name with them. Uh, there's probably some other options. I really haven't looked into that uh, that much, but that solar generator is going to be one of those things that, that you know, or, or solar in general, maybe not that one, but but solar in general, because it is going to be silent. And if you are just boiling water or doing something like that, that is something you don't want to crank on the generator just to boil, you know, two quarts of water or something to cook some legacy food. Uh, because you're you're basically, like I said, I'll probably say it a few times tonight, you're ringing the dinner bell. Uh, so, uh, but this one, if, if you have the means to do something like this, you, there's also DIY options as well that you can do with uh, setting up a, a battery bank or something like that. Uh, which you can do for a lot cheaper than this. But again, you're talking about how much energy can you put into it? How much sunshine are you getting? How many solar panels do you have? So many different calculations that go into this. Uh, but And how long is, is the situation going on? The positive with solar is, it, is it's renewable. Once your fuel runs out, your fuel runs out. And if there's no way to get more fuel, your barbecue grill uh, you're going to be putting sticks and and you know tinder in there to get a fire started uh, and cooking with it that way. So, 
let's move on to the next one. And this one's a, a little bit tricky. And this one is gas stoves. And there's a huge caveat to this. If you are one of the lucky people that have one of the older gas stoves without, because the government, you know, they love to put all these safety features and everything, right? They, but they basically ruin gas cans. Uh, but these new gas powered stove have what's called an interlock feature. And this interlock feature means that it's not going to work without electricity. Uh, if you do have one of the old school uh, gas stoves, that may work. I'm, and I'm not real sure about that. I know my, my grandmother had the gas stove, but uh, back then I didn't, I didn't care about these things like I care about them now. I didn't pay too much attention. But if anybody knows or anybody does have a, a, an older gas stove, would they work? Because I don't know how that, that gas gets generated you know, and pushed through the lines to where you are. I don't know if it would be something where you have that for a certain, maybe you'll have it for a week or so, but once everything runs out, then you don't anymore. I don't know exactly how that works, but uh, for some people, this could be an option. For most people, this is not going to be an option. It would be nice though, uh, because it gives you the, the ability to cook indoors, although it's still putting off a flame and all of that, but uh so at any rate, we'll move on from gas stoves here and we'll go to the next one, which is the good old fashioned wood fires. And you've got a lot of different options for this. You've got the fire pit. I've got a fire pit, a real cheap fire pit in the backyard. I'm actually going to do uh, something a little bit better. You could dig a hole in your backyard, line it with rocks, do the old campfire thing. You've got the camp stoves that you could use if you're just, uh, you know, boiling a pot of water or something small, maybe cooking some eggs, something like that. You could use one of those. If it is in the wintertime and other people are using their fireplaces, maybe you can get away with that. Uh, but again, you are going to be giving off those those smoke signals. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've all walked out of the house and you can tell when somebody's got their fireplace on uh, and it smells like it might be right next door, but it could be a couple miles away. Uh, one thing, you know, with these as well is, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's, if you are in a situation where a lot of other people are using it, maybe it's cold or anything like that, uh, but that might be, uh, might be okay, but you've just got to, uh, you know, pay close attention to that. But a fire, that is one of those things where that is, it's not, you know, renewable like solar is. But in my area, there are a lot of trees. Now, who knows how many trees there's going to be, uh, say, something last two months. I mean, I have, I have no idea. Maybe maybe it looks like a desert out here after that. But uh, that is sort of a fuel source that, you know, could be sort of renewable. Uh, granted, the trees you're going to cut down are probably fresh. They're not seasoned or anything like that. So, but... It is, uh, you know, one of those options that is something that you really need to think about and something that it may be the only option that you have uh, as far as getting it, whether it's you're talking about heat in your home or whether you're talking about cooking some of the food you actually have. So, But uh, at any rate, we'll move on to the next one. And it's sort of the same type of thing, uh, but it's indoors. And this is the a wood stove. We just recently put a wood stove insert into our fireplace but fireplaces and wood stoves, again, you're going to be putting off that smell. But if it is cold out, this is something that you can do indoors. Ours, uh, the, the ours isn't quite like this one that I have pictured here, where it's got the full top where you can actually, uh, you know, get water to boil. Ours has a little uh, platform on the top that will heat up water, but it won't heat it to the point of boiling. So it would be something that I would have to put in maybe cast iron, uh, maybe a Dutch oven, something like that. I would have to put it into the oven itself to uh, uh, to get the water to boil, uh, something like that. Uh, so the next one I've got here, and this one is by far my favorite, I think, and this is the All-American Sun Oven or solar ovens in general. Uh, the All-American Sun Oven just works so much better uh, than I've used a couple different ones, and it just works so fantastic. 
Uh, and the good thing, the cool thing about this All American Sun oven, well, there's a few different cool things about this. But one, it doesn't burn anything. Like this, the bread I made the other day, I actually took off for a little bit and came back and probably could have taken it out an hour before I did. And that video you saw in the beginning was this bread right here. Uh, and it was absolutely perfect. So it doesn't burn anything. It doesn't have that convection type heat. So it doesn't burn anything. The other thing that's cool about these solar ovens, uh, this the sun oven specifically, I'm not sure about the other ones, but this doesn't give off any smell at all. I can stick this in, and I have stuck this in the backyard with my dogs and set it out there for, I, I made some uh, pot roast in there. Uh, set it out there all day long, uh, probably four or five hours out there. Dogs didn't even mess with it. One, it gets a little bit hot, so they don't want to touch it. If they go up and smell that glass, they're going to burn their nose. Not so bad that they injure themselves, but they're just not going to mess with it. And two, it doesn't give them really any reason to because it doesn't give off any smells. So if you can't go the solar route, uh, something like this might be an option because your neighbors won't even know unless you've got it out in the front yard or they can see that you've got a solar oven. A lot of people would probably look at this solar oven and go, what the hell is that? Uh, I'm sure that people, when I put it out in my driveway and I start cooking, uh, the neighbors that can see, see to my driveway, uh, two of them, probably sitting there thinking, what the hell is that dude doing out there? Is that some sort of satellite dish or something? Uh, but a lot of people aren't going to know what it is, and it's not going to raise those, those red flags uh, or anything like that. But solar ovens are fantastic. This is one of those things where if you are in the midst of something really big and you don't want to be lighting fires, you don't want to be starting the generator, this is something that really would be a viable option. Now, they are a few hundred bucks. I bought mine about seven years ago, and I, I just think it's, it's well worth it. It is uh, one of my most important uh, pieces of sur prepping survival gear that I have. I just absolutely love the Sun Oven. And it's, it's one of those that doesn't just sit around all the time. Uh, it's one of those that I use probably three, four times throughout the year just for just to cook because I love the way the food tastes in it. Uh, you can also boil water in this, pasteurized water, uh, just so many different things you can do with the All-American Sun Oven. All right, let's move on here. The next one I've got is a propane grill. And this is the, the one that probably most of us have and as long as you've got the one with the burner on the side, you're going to be able to boil water. You're going to be able to do a lot of things with this. But like I said before, uh, this is going to be one of those that, you know, you're, you're giving out signals that you've got food if you're lighting this up. So if other people in the neighborhood are doing it, maybe you're okay. Uh, if they're not, I don't know that I would be lighting the propane grill, but this is one of those options. I think everybody should have a, a couple small tanks of, of propane that goes with these. A couple we have, like I said, I think I said last week or the week before, we have three of them here that we just continue to rotate through because even it, it, it may not, it, it may be something sort of like the pandemic that is long rolling, but it may not be something that is completely everybody's out of food and they're fighting over things. It could be something, uh, a job loss where you just can't afford to do the other thing. So propane is always uh, something I, I just, I think is an important part of your preps. Uh, propane grills are, are good to have, but there are a lot of situations where it's probably a good idea or probably not a good idea to use those. Now, sort of along the same lines as those are the little Coleman stoves. And these will put off less of a smell, but they're still, uh, people are still going to know you're cooking. The, the flames are smaller. As long as you cook things like in this picture right here, as long as you're cooking things in the pan, there you're not getting the juices and the flavors and all that dropping into the flames and burning off and, um, you know, sending uh, the, the aromas all over the neighborhood. Uh, that might be better uh, or that might be okay. These also have the smaller cans. What's good about these types of grills are they are portable. So if you do need to get the heck out of Dodge, uh, you're uh, you know bugging out for a little while. Things have gotten so bad you need to take off. These are yeah. You, good luck getting the uh, propane grill in the back of your truck or the back of your car. Uh, but this Coleman stove will fold up nice and neat. Uh, and this is uh, sort of the same one that I have, a little bit older. A uh, little bit older model. This might even be a newer one, but these are, are good to have as well. Uh, the last one I have here on this list is uh, back behind me. I've got this Instafire stove, uh, this Vesta Instafire up here, uh, and it's canned, uh, canned heat, basically. 
And these are, uh, if you're thinking about if a situation where you'd need to cook indoors, these are a viable option. You do need a little bit of ventilation uh, because they do, uh, you know, you see caterers use these all the time, but they're usually in big banquet halls and things like that. So if you're using this in a small room, whether it's to heat up that room, uh, bring it up a few degrees, or uh, you know, cook, boil water, do whatever you need to do. Uh, you know, you are going to need ventilation. But I've done, I did a video uh, on this, and it absolutely will boil water. You know, I'd fried an egg on it. Uh, it brings up the temperature of a room. Uh, and I all I had was the door cracked. I didn't have a window up or anything. Brought it up, I believe, like five six degrees. If I would have left it on more, uh, it probably would have brought it up a little bit more. But Sterno, uh, canned heat, all of these different things are, are good to have. I've got a whole case, a couple cases right here of the high heat Sterno. The Sterno itself, Sterno brand canned heat, doesn't, I, I did a comparison of, of the different types. And I've got this seven pin, uh, the, the extra hot canned heat that Vesta sells, and then the Sterno brand. And the Sterno... It, it'll get hot enough to boil water, but it takes a whole lot longer. And then you've got the seven pin, which was the cheapest stuff I could find. And it actually burns a little bit hotter than the Sterno. And then that I was wondering about the, the Vesta canned heat, the extra hot, if it really was. And it actually really is extra hot. So it is worth that few extra bucks uh, if you want to make sure that you're going to be able to cook something, make sure you're going to be able to boil water and do it quicker and not have to expend as much fuel in those canisters uh, than you would uh, normally with, say, the Sterno or something like that. Now, this is not the most cost-effective cost effective option out there either. So uh, just keep that in mind. But it is something, if you've got a few of these different options, uh, you know, you can pick and choose what the situation dictates that you do. Uh, you know, as far as if you need to do something without the the heat going on, uh, without the the smoke and the smells and things like that. Think about the, you know, some sort of solar option. You've also got like the hot plates. Uh, I have this on here as well, but I wasn't sure I wanted to bring this up because hot plates are just not that practical. If you had one of those expensive ass Yetis that 3000 watts, you can run a hot plate. I believe one of these hot plates takes about 12,000 watts or 1200 watts to run. So they are not the most practical as far as energy usage, but they, you know, you can use them indoors and, and all of those things. So if you've got the, uh, the ability, you've got the alternative energy plan to use that stuff, uh, you know, more power to you, but uh, it's just, uh, I think it's important to have all of these or think about all of these different different options and think about what you would do in different situations, in different scenarios, right after a disaster. If things are kicking off in around you, uh, things are getting pretty bad and you're not going to want to uh, light that fire, uh, what other options do you have? And the, the fallback is always that canned food, right? The the SpaghettiOs, the, the canned peaches, the canned green beans, things like that. Those will do. Uh, those will sustain you, but they will get pretty old after a while. So 